Another area where the church and government overlapped was in a series of wars known as the Crusades. The Crusades were a terrible time in history where the church encouraged people to become killers. They had their reasons of course as we'll see, but we'll also see the whole thing ended in a huge mess for Europe. The story of the Crusades goes way back in history. It is a harsh story, especially for Europe, but it was a huge event in any case. The reasons for these wars goes back to the Roman Empire. The big star on this map is the city of Jerusalem. Under the Roman Empire the Christians controlled this city. When Rome fell another empire took over this area, and therefore the city. The Islamic Empire, which we'll talk about at the end of the year, was a non-Christian group from the east, and having them in control of Jerusalem was not acceptable. But why? Why was this one city so important? Well, Jerusalem is considered a very holy city to Jews, Christians and Muslims alike. Here's an overhead shot of the main part of the city. It doesn't look like much, but each of the religions has a claim to it. This here is the Wailing Wall. It is where the main Jewish temple used to stand. To the Jews this is one of the most important spots in the world. They believe their temple will one day be rebuilt on this spot. To Christians Jerusalem is important because it is where Jesus was crucified and resurrected. It is where Jesus performed many of his miracles as well. This is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, which is built over the spot where Jesus was buried and resurrected. Finally, this is the Dome of the Rock. This is the spot where Muslims believe Muhammad jumped off his horse and directly into heaven. Today it is a mosque and known as the third most important place in Islam. Here's where it gets messy. In this picture you can see all three of these buildings. They are all very close to each other and all three groups feel they have the right to the city. The Pope at the time, Pope Urban II, decided it was time to take Jerusalem back. He sent a message throughout Europe to stop fighting each other and get ready to fight the Muslims. Hundreds of thousands of people, way more than the Pope expected or wanted, decided to go on crusade. They gathered from all parts of Europe and headed off to Jerusalem. Now, I'm going to give you a very short overview of the wars. Don't think this is all that happened. In 1095, Pope Urban centuries of Christian doctrine by announcing that it was now fine for violent young men to butcher people, so long as the victims weren't Christian. From all over Europe, knights flocked to the cause. At the capture of Jerusalem in 1099, they boasted of wading in infidel blood up to their knees. Hitherto, knights would have had to do penance for killing, but now the killing was the penance. In 1276, the Catalan knight-turned-hermit, Raymond Lull, thought he'd better lay down some ethical guidelines. Lull said that the proper chivalric knight's first duty was to defend the Christian faith, then his lord, and then women, widows, and orphans. For Lull, even the knight's equipment was full of religious significance. The male coat protected him like a castle against vice. The helmet was a symbol of the knight's fear of shame. The sword reminded him of Christ on the cross. The shield signified how he should defend his lord. And the spear stood for truth and strength. The infidel barbarians in their frenzy have invaded and ravished the churches of God in the holy city of Christ, depopulated them by the sword village and fire, they circumcise the Christians and they spread the blood upon the altars. Listen, good people, and listen... Nothing like it had ever happened before. Well, it wouldn't happen again. Of course, the thing was, it wasn't meant to happen. These weren't migrants or nomads. These were settled rural communities who suddenly stopped work, packed their bags, said goodbye to their friends, and set off to put the world to rights. One thing is obvious. The church had a power over people that it really didn't understand. It had succeeded in making heaven as real as anything on earth. The church taught that judgment day was at hand and that the fires of hell were very real indeed. All men going there who die untimely deaths, whether it is on the journey or while fighting the pagans, will have their sins remitted. 
God has given the Pope the power to grant this to those about to go. The enemy's possessions will be yours. You will seize their treasures and return home victorious, or you will die gloriously. Gird your swords, every one of you, I say. God wills it. God wills it. Guards, come together. The Pope had expected to raise an army. He got a mass migration. And no one knows how many people set out. To do what they must, they were prepared to follow any leader, including, in one case, a divinely inspired goose. These crusades end up lasting over 300 years. There were eight major attempts to take back Jerusalem. A couple actually succeeded, but each time the Muslims took it back. When it all is said and under hundreds of thousands of people dead and Europe is right back where it started. Jerusalem remains in Muslim hands. There were, however, some benefits to Europe. One major thing is that the European kingdoms stopped fighting each other, at least for a while. These wars gave them a common enemy and helped to unify them. Additionally, trade expanded greatly. Europeans were now aware of how much the world had to offer, and they liked it. On that same note information was shared. The Arab world was advanced way beyond Europe at the time so this gave Europe a glimpse of what a modern society could look like. One final result, that wasn't go great really, was that so many knights and nobles died, that the kings back in Europe, gained even more power. They took total control over the land in many cases. That sure wasn't the Pope's plan.